Jordan, Megan, I know I wasn't the best father, not even the best example. Video of the late talk show star Jerry Springer reading his will and leaving a significant chunk of his estate to the two black children he fathered outside of wedlock goes viral, only to be exposed as a stage performance. Jerry Springer, the late great talk show star, has been debunked as a virtual play actor when a video of him reading a will in which he left a major percentage of his assets to two black children he had out of wedlock went viral. The late television star, who was buried in a small private ceremony, caused a stir on Monday when a clip circulated showing him reading a last will and testament. It was quickly deduced, though, that the image was actually from a virtual play set in 2020 called Blood Money, in which he had a minor role. His alma mater, Tulane University, presented it as part of their Ria for AMED 2020, a festival of new plays on social justice. Two of the five people Jerry was talking to in the video were black. He reads something and adds, Joan kept me away from you with the threat of exposure. She didn't prevent me from taking care of you financially. See, I informed her that in the event of my death, you would be mentioned equally on my will and that she would not inherit a dime of my riches if I had to accept a life without you. But with everything that's happening in the world today, I know I have to take things further. Megan Jordan, our house in New Orleans, is now yours to do with as you like. My children, John and Misha, will receive the balance of my estate, including my properties in Mississippi, Georgia, and South Carolina, as well as my bank accounts, investment portfolios, and all other liquid and intangible assets. Girls, I've been asking you to go out and create your millions for as long as I can remember. If that doesn't work, I guess you could sell the house and divide the proceeds from the sale of my entire estate. Twitter users who thought the clip was real reacted with comments, like the best Jerry Springer episode ever is Jerry reading his own will to red exclamation point emoji. He hid the fact that he fathered two black children outside of his marriage and left all of his wealth to the kids he never met because his wife threatened to expose the truth. What a legend two emojis representing a red exclamation point and a shocked expression. Wow, Jerry Springer sure went out with a bang, commented another. This document serves as his last will and testament. Someone on Twitter said, one thing Jerry Springer is gonna do is keep us shocked and entertained laughing emoji. Meanwhile, weeks ago, Springer grew emotional as he talked about his family dying in the Holocaust, and he also stated that his daughter seeing him do the waltz on Dancing with the Stars was his single happiest moment in television. Springer passed away at the age of 79 after a lengthy final interview. In an emotional interview with Genevieve Hassan for the podcast Celebrity Catch-Up, Life after that thing I did back in March, the television legend shared with the host. I was happy I reached 79. Springer's 27 years in daytime television are great, but his favorite TV moment was a bit of a shocker. In 2006, Springer competed on the third season of Dancing with the Stars. He told the press at the time that he wanted to learn the waltz for his daughter Katie's wedding so that he could dance it with her. In week four of the show, Springer learnt the waltz from professional partner Kim Johnson with his daughter watching. Backslash. His finest television moment was the night we did the waltz, and then she came out of the audience, he added. What you did there was nothing short of spectacular. That's what I'll always remember most, and looking back on it makes it all worthwhile. Despite receiving average points from the judges, Springer was the season's audience favorite and ultimately finished in fifth place. Springer broke down in tears during the final hour of the interview as he described learning the horrific circumstances of what happened to his family during the Holocaust. Hassan, the podcast host, and his sister, Evelyn Springer, discussed Hassan's appearance on the British genealogy show Who Do You Think You Are? in August 2008. The show specialists investigate a participant's family tree and then transport them to the location of a pivotal event in the family's past. Springer said, Unfortunately in our story we ended up in concentration camps initially, and the toughest one was when my mom's mom was exterminated in Chemo, and Chemo was an extermination camp where you were only there for a night and a day. He said that his family was sent from Berlin to a ghetto in Łódź, Poland. The talk show host continued, And this was all information we knew nothing about. And among the many sad parts about this is mum, 
and dad never knew any of this. They knew their parents had been kidnapped, but it wasn't like being sent to a concentration camp where you'd get a postcard every once in a while. You're in your 30s when both of your parents disappear, and you have no idea what happened to them. And they went on for the rest of their lives not knowing the details that Evelyn and I will soon uncover. For six months, Springer's grandmother endured harsh conditions in Woods before being transferred to Chemno, exterminated and discarded in a ditch. When he described visiting the scene, he became visibly shaken and remarked, and when you see it, it's just, it's unbelievable. It defies all logic and reason. Remember that none of these victims did anything to deserve death because of who and what they were. That's why they identify as Jews by chance. That's the sole rationale for the genocide they suffered, and that is the guiding concept of your existence. He went on to say that hearing his family's Holocaust story was a turning point in his life, leading him to adopt a liberal political stance based on the principle of no judgment. The famous actor was born in a bomb bunker in London's Highgate tube station in February 1944. Other members of his family were murdered in Nazi death chambers, but his parents, Richard and Margaret, managed to escape to England. After moving to the Queen's neighborhood of New York City, when he was five years old, Springer became a lifetime follower of the New York Yankees baseball team. At the close of the podcast, TV legend Jerry shared some words of wisdom with the youth of today. Work hard at your current position, he advised, and eventually your efforts will be recognized. Keep an open mind, since even if you know exactly what you want to accomplish now, you have no idea what you'll be doing in 20 years. On Thursday, Springer's family announced his death at age 79 from pancreatic cancer. After the TV personality died peacefully at his Chicago home, they requested his admirers to make donations to charity in his honor. Many people have expressed their sorrow over the loss of such a irreplaceable skill, and his loved ones have responded by saying, as he always said, take care of yourself and each other. After NBQ Universal canceled his most recent show, Judge Jerry Springer claimed in an interview last year that he intended to retire while he was still healthy. He later seemed to hint at his sickness. I don't have to make a living, he continued. I just want to have fun. To many Americans, wild and rowdy TV moments on The Jerry Springer Show were a guilty pleasure, and Springer was the host who provided it for 27 years. He also explored running for governor of Ohio and had a lengthy political career, which included serving as mayor of Cincinnati from 1977 to 1979. According to family representative Jane Galvin, Jerry's capacity to connect with people was at the heart of his success in whatever he tried, whether it was politics, television, or just laughing with people on the street who wanted a photo or a word. His passing is tragic and unexpected, but the legacy of his mind, heart, and sense of humor will endure in the hearts of all who knew him. Springer joked about becoming the talk show host, ringmaster of Civilization's End, on his Twitter bio. He also insisted that his guests willingly accepted the risk of scorn and humiliation by appearing on his show. His guests would get into wild fights, with many of the expletive-filled rants being bleeped out, and the audience would cheer his name. The show was deemed escapist entertainment by Springer, while others claimed it contributed to the dumbing down of American society. With a wink and a nod, he'd tell people, may you never be on my show. In the 1990s, his show was so successful that it even beat Oprah Winfrey's in several markets. In its place, Springer launched his own corkroom show, Judge Jerry, which aired for three seasons before being canceled in 2018. The show's salacious focus remained consistent throughout its long run, over 4,000 episodes, with recent episodes including Stripper Sex Turned Me Straight, Stop Pimpin' My Twin Sister, and Hookin' Up With My Therapist. When his daily program was drawing up to 7 million people in the late 1990s, Springer created a Too Hot for TV video in which he argued that his audience should not feel disgusted. Listen to what Springer had to say. Look, television does not and must not produce values. It's just a representation of the world as it is, flaws and all. Believe this, 
The politicians and corporations that want to dictate what we can and cannot watch pose a larger threat to the safety of the United States and our precious freedom than any of our guests ever could. His last television performance was as The Beatle on the previous season of The Masked Singer, in which he sang a Frank Sinatra standard. Katie, Springer's deep blind daughter, and Evelyn, his sister, are all he has left to mourn his passing. On Thursday, David Hasselhoff tweeted his respect for Springer, calling him a great friend. A close buddy who filled in for me as Captain Hook in the Wimbledon pantomime, he remarked, is someone I never expected to lose. I am deeply sorry by his demise. He was a wonderful human being. A broken heart leads to what? Thanks for watching.